Good morning and grand rising. Blessings to each of you here on this Friday morning here from the southwest coast of Maine, where it is snowing very lightly, uh, very peacefully, and uh, it looks like a winter wonderland. Um, and I bless you all from this beautiful space and uh, welcome you to Presence of Light with Charlie Riverman Bridge Run. So how are you? How is everything in your life? Today's message is, is really an interesting one for me because it, it came about very rapidly. And I'm, as you see, I'm clicking off pages, etc. I, I woke up late and uh, it was needed. It was a deep sleep that was needed. Yet it put me into that spiral of, that we all get into of rush. We have to, you know, we have a deadline. Uh, we have a responsibility. We have all of this stuff going on that we feel, you know, we're committed to and we have to be there. And that's the energy this morning that I uh, was really embraced with. And what's interesting is that in the moment of all of that, and it's it's now calming down as I have arrived here with you, uh, is that it's amazing what we can do. It's amazing what we can do when our hearts are in alignment with it. And for me, this talk every Friday morning is something I've been doing for over two years. Um, and I've, I've done a you know, similar talk you know, elsewhere. But it's, it's amazing how we become accustomed to bringing the light in us, through us, and sharing it as love. And I don't know how many of you might actually feel that, but that's, that's my feeling. That's who I am. And as many of you know who have followed me, you know that I, I died in a motorcycle accident 29 years ago. So everything I do, every breath I take, I can take as just, you know, another breath, or I can look at it completely differently and, and say, you know, what is it that is really going on here? Am I really truly identifying with who I'm supposed to be, or am I just mimicking? Am I just moving through life in a way that is really superficial? So good morning to Carrie and Maria and Vivian and Terry, and uh, bless you all for showing up and, and expressing an interest in the messages that come through my heart. What is interesting is that all of us right now are going through some periods of um, disturbance. And I'm going to use the word disturbance. And it doesn't matter where that disturbance originated from. What really matters is what we do with that interference. First, it will affect us. This has an effect on us energetically, emotionally, which is energy and motion. But what do we, how do we take that and express that from us? And when I look around the world at, you know, what we're going through, I look at it as a period of uh, evolution of humanity, that the whole collective of the human species is evolving into a new uh, way of being able to see each other and live in harmony and balance with each other. Now, there are many who will take the opposite 
look and they'll say, oh, we're crashing, we're dying, it's the end of the world, blah, blah, blah. And you can see, I just negate that. <laughs> there's, there's no room in my world for that. And there's no room in my world for that because of my own personal experience. And knowing that I can't change that. That that was a gift given to me in order to be here right now and serve all of life, not just humans, but all of life here with light and the love that is contained in that light. My message this morning is that each of you are light. Each of you are light and you are containers filled with love. I'm going to back off and be a little less intense here. Relax a little. Have a sip of my coffee here. Global Heart Team. Global Heart Team. It's a group I belong to. We meet on Thursdays and we send love to the world as a collective. And what's amazing is how we know that that love reaches out and enters into the global field of planet Earth down here, this little teardrop of planet Earth, and, and creates a frequency that people may not consciously be aware of or recognize but it does change the frequency. And this is what all of us are needing to do right now, is to, to come to that place in our hearts where we uh, have the ability to trust ourselves enough to say, okay, I can do this. This is who I am. It doesn't matter what's happening to me. It doesn't matter what, you know, the negativity I might feel in myself. I can overcome this because in truth, I am so much more than this. So it's a little pep talk this morning, I guess, <laughs> which is, is always good. Um, I said more of you coming, Linda, April, bless you. So what is life here on our Mother Earth? It's a big question. What is life? What are we doing here? Why are we here? What is this all about? And we may never know the, you know, is there one answer? Is there, are there a hundred answers? We may not ever know that in our human consciousness. And we may not be able to define exactly what we are. Are we angels that have descended? Are we spirits? Are we uh, star beings? Are, are we just, a, a, you know, a phenomena like a plant or, you know, that exists here and that's all there is? We can go through that whole mental process trying to figure it out. But the one thing we can't stop the one thing we can't stop, because if we do, we're no longer here, is this heartbeat. When we stop this heartbeat, we're gone. It's real simple. You could, your mind can go, your mind, you can go into a coma and have no mind, no consciousness, no whatever. But if your heart is still beating, you're still alive. You're still here. you still here and you have a function. And that function is, as long as we're breathing and our heart is beating, we are carrying the light and love of who and what we might be. How I'm going to let you define that for yourselves. But it's creation. I'm just going to offer the word creation. You and I 
you know, all living things are part of what we would call creation. And we each one of us have the ability to create something unique. We can create something separate from everything else, or we can create something as a collective. If we create too many things of separation, then that's what we create. The separation becomes the greater part of the whole. And the storms in the Midwest of America this year with people who are losing electricity losing have hit me very strangely because it's something I take for granted. We, you know, just think, well, in this day and age, in this world, that seems primitive. Why is that happening? And have we come this far that we can take and make machines that can go to the stars and take photographs? Yet we can't have comfort and control over our environment to the point where everybody is safe. Doesn't mean that they have great abundance, but at least they have the comforts of being safe as living beings on planet Earth. That was my thought this morning when I woke up. And I've been sending love and light to all those who are suffering, not just those who are suffering from the cold, but suffering around the world, including yourself. If you're suffering in some manner, I send you light and love. And this is just who we truly are, is these beings who have come here into physical form from something completely different. It's not just about here and now. It's about remembering who we are as this collective whole of light and love. And in that, the peace, the peace, what we call peace and tranquility and connection and compatibility and communication comes out of that. But the two key ingredients are light and love. And those are what I experienced when I died. At first, first it was the peace. I was out of this, out of this world where all the static and the confusion and uh, positive negative energy is going. I was out of that. And out of that, as I left behind and looked behind me, I realized where was, I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know who I was with. But the peace became more powerful. And the next thing I encountered was light. How I look at light right now is who I am and who you are when we're not here. We are that which we call light and which the stories have been told about the light and how much light there is in heaven, et cetera, et cetera. That's who we truly are. We are beings of light, but there's no physicality. There's no taste, smell. There's none of what we experience here as humans. It's here in this humanity where we get the, the wounds, if you will, the scars, the inability to uh, feel grateful and the inability to communicate with, with each other peacefully. We have all of this angst and all of this anger and all of this frustration and all of this suffering. 
whether it be from the elements, and I'm not blaming the elementals, it's just the, the atmosphere of planet Earth. But when I look at that, I have to say, who has helped or assisted in changing that environment over thousands of years? And I have to look and say, we as humans have done that. And the messages right now are getting very, very significant for all of us to stop and look around and say how and where and why and what is my place in all of this. And I'm not trying to lecture you. I'm just trying to say it sincerely so that each of us deepen into this fact of when we don't have gratitude, for everything around us, then how can we express the love and light that we are? Because it takes gratitude, being grateful for being here, for being in this physicality, in this environment, on this planet, in this world, in this universe. And until we become truly grateful for that, we're not going to do anything to embrace it and to be one and whole with it. And I think that's what we're seeing right now, that even in the environment, the extent of our separation if you will, from life, for our own mental purposes is costing us the home we live in. So like those around the world who are suffering from fires and freezing cold storms and they're losing their homes, I just read a story about a tribe, an ancient uh, tribal group in China that they just, the, the village was burned. And I, I don't want to know why or how, but even they have lost their homes. And their history goes back for ages. And I look and I say, we are losing our home. So the key right now is how do we become more grateful? So the question for me this morning and for you this morning is, what are you grateful for? What are you grateful for? And, you know, it's, it's amazing. We all have heart. Well, somebody's uh, Gary or somebody saying we're going to Gary and um, we're looking at, uh, words here is that work walking the hard road has caught my attention we've all walked a hard road none of us had it easy and it, it's amazing because the quote that i have right in front of me right now after the words what are we grateful for is there is always something to be grateful for even when life is hard and times are tough. I'm going to put that in the sideline. I don't usually look at the sideline while I'm talking, but I'm going to put that here. And it was the first thing I read this morning. As I began my day, I started up the computer and I get a daily report from this messenger called the Daily Owners page. And I always like to read that just to start my day. And those were the words that hit me. What am I grateful for? And I thought of how grateful I am for this opportunity to speak from my heart to the world. 
And it made me think just like you of all the hard times in our lives and all the hard times that the people in the Midwest are having and the people around the world in the small villages who don't have clean water and who don't have food to eat and are suffering from diseases, not just the pandemic. There have been many diseases that have been just as deadly as this pandemic, but we don't hear about them and we don't, or they're contained in small areas, but they ravage and, and destroy lives. So the key is, is gratitude. When we find something to be grateful for, it is then that we are ready, we become ready and willing to offer our love and compassion. Because in that moment of acceptance, we're at peace. I want you all to feel peace within you. Whatever it takes for you to feel peace within you, I want you to go and do that. Whether it's sitting by a river, or whether it's sitting at the top of the mountain, whether it's playing with your children, what brings you peace? Because what brings you peace will bring you gratitude. And when you have gratitude, you'll want to share it. Because there's nothing greater than sharing love and compassion. And we can only do that if we have gratitude. And I know we all have pain, we all have challenges, and especially in this world right now, because it's full of ups and downs and twists and turns and, and information flow that is distorted and manipulated and all of those things. And the message is, all of that is telling us, come home. Come home. Come home, children. I'm calling you. And who is that I am that's calling us? But ourselves. Ourselves at a different level of awareness, of consciousness. One that's not in physicality. One that's basis is pure light. I'm just going to tell you that when you take all this away, you go back to the light. Whether we have individuality there or not, I don't, I can't really say. I did because I, where I went to, there was still individuality. And beyond that, there's only oneness. It's like if you go to the sun. Eventually, you're not going to see the sun anymore. You're going to be the sun. Because there's nothing else. And there's a message that says, nobody escapes the journey of life. And what amazes me is my guides gave me the, and I forget what, anagram or whatever it is for life, and it was love in form evolving. And I'm gonna put that in the sidelines over there so you can have that. It's my day of gifting to you. Don't hit end live, Charlie. <laughs> hit the return button. <laughs> and never lose your sense of humor. <laughs> I don't think I'm perfect. Believe me, I'm not perfect by any sense, shape, manner, or form. And I don't want you to think that I think I am either, because I'm just as real as you are. And none of us have come into this, these bodies with full remembrances of all that is, of who we are and what, you know, we might call the divine level. We can't contain that in this brain. 
It's just impossible. It's not, it wasn't designed to, to be able to do that. The closest we can come to understanding it is in our hearts. And this is why I always talk about what are we doing? Are we loving each other? Are we loving the world? Are we embracing each other as one and whole? Because as soon as we come from that place into our, the waters of our mother's wombs, they call it the forgetfulness. You forget. Because there is no memory. There's no need to remember there. You are. You always are. And when we enter into this physicality, we're helpless. We're molecules, you know, and a womb, an embryo, uh, flo floating in water. We're water beings. We're not humans yet. We're water. We're cells in water. We're light that's transformed. And we're in a, this watery womb with no consciousness, no thoughts, no nothing. And then when we're given birth and we come out into this world, the physicality, you know, this is where we embrace all of what sometimes frustrates the living hell out of us. The pain, the suffering. We don't remember it. We don't remember that first breath. It could have been very painful. That's our introduction to physical life. In that moment, in that moment, you have a genetic memory that is, re is storing every event that happens to you. And as we play out our lives, all of those vents, when the line connects, boom. And if a lot of them are what we would call painful experiences or shocks, and we have no explanation for them, our life pattern changes according to all of those little energetic adjustments. Right now, we have the opportunity to look at them for what they are. They're bumps in the road. It's my guide speaking. They're bumps in the road that have jarred your teeth, that have broken your bones, that have hurt like hell. But they're not who you are. They're just the journey. And each one of you have an opportunity to ride on much smoother roads through much more beautiful scenery and shine like the sun on the water. and invite others to be with you in this journey of light, love. You are light, transmuted into form. And we need others' care to bring us to a place where we can function in physicality and alignment with this fantastic structure we call a body. Bring it all together. Bring it all together. You are light in form. You are light in form. And even if people don't want to hear that or don't want to believe that, that's you're, in, you're entitled to that. But I want you all to remember that when we stop looking at the suffering as the suffering, 
that's what I did this morning when I was looking around the world of the cold and I'm looking at suffering and I want to relieve that. I realized that that's just physicality. What do I have to offer that? I'm not, I'm not here to be a healer, I'm not here to, you know, do anything. But in the process of just sending my light and my love, to that it changes everything and it changes me it makes me have a deeper gratitude not just for life but a deep inner gratefulness for who i am at a higher level and honoring and respecting that. And this is where we have come to, to look and say, until you love and give yourself light, how do you think you're going to give it to somebody else? So I want you all to think about how can each one of you attract the light and love that you truly are into your own physicality and become the containers, the chalices, if you will. I always love this term, the chalices, that all you need to do is just lean forward. Don't even have to... Think about it, you don't have to draw. just lean forward and let your light and your love flow into the world. And I promise you in that moment that you do that, when you rise up again, you will automatically refill. Find yourself a way to offer what you have to the world. The form doesn't matter because it's all light and love. When whatever we do is from light and love, we change everything around us. The quantum field shifts. You are that powerful. I am that powerful. Sometimes it's scary to think that we all have that power because we look at how power is misused. The truth is you can't misuse that power because the minute this human mind decides to distort that, that's exactly what you get. Distortion. And that's how you recognize true light and love from the distortion. And the more we become aware of this, every day what happens is the world becomes brighter and brighter and things shift and change. And we have children who are coming into this world right now whose energy is different, whose genetic code is different, whose awareness is different. And they're going to be here. And we have a choice. Are we here to welcome them? Are we here to welcome the future generations? Or are we here to destroy and wreck the place so that they have to start from scratch because we're stuck in our suffering. There I go preaching again, huh? <laughs> we're all having the same experience. We're all coming from the same source. Let us look at each other as light rather than the physical entities. Doesn't mean we can't enjoy the physical entity business, but we are light and we are love and we need to respect that. 
let us read my final word is let us respect the light in each other as the light which is within us and who we indeed are and i'm just going to place that line down there as well copy and paste and hit there you go i love you all i i have fun being here um even when i wake up late <laughs> as you can see as i wake up late it doesn't stop me from running my mouth um people always criticize me for talking too much that's who i be i do it for you being the hermit in the mountain doesn't serve me it doesn't serve anyone else so this week think about how you as the light can change some simple things in your life that would give you an opportunity to share that light with others. And it doesn't have to be dramatic. It can be simple. A smile. A little note. A phone call. But do it from your heart. Do it from your heart. This is where we need to live from. And I know that's been damaged. It's been damaged in me. I can tell my sad stories, and my painful stories, just like everyone else. I did not escape any of that. As I say, I smashed my head on the ground. <laughs> or my guys <laughs> laugh. Smashed my head on the ground. That's what it took for me to wake up. I don't wish that on anyone. Wake up. See your true self, see the light, see the love. The peace will happen. The more you see the light and the love, it doesn't mean everything is gonna go the way you want it to. It doesn't mean that, oh, every day is going to be filled with a basket full of miracles. But the real miracle will be you will come home to yourself. And in that moment, you grow into the beautiful being that you truly are in physical form. As it was originally blueprinted. We're going home. We're going home, back to the original blueprint. And it's going to be a long process. But it's nice to know that many of us are here to anchor that, to bring that forth. Not just in our own lives, but our children's lives and others children's lives just feel that okay so on the sidelines just to recognize you all oh my goodness so so many beautiful people indwelling christ in all the cosmos Beautiful words, love God and love one another. Light shines through the wounds. 
our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities. There's really no struggle except the struggle we think there is. And the more, and I'm just going to say this gently, the more we struggle, the more we keep ourselves away from the light and love we are. For there is no struggle in light and love. Come to recognize that. clear message comes from the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many messages in that gospel. And there are many messages in many what we would call uh, religious teachings. And what you'll find is if you look at many of them, they're all saying pretty much the same thing. Okay. I'm just going to, I have the Course in Miracles book open right here. You can see all my little notes. Lesson 50. I am sustained by the love of God. Doesn't matter what you call God. God doesn't respond to human name calling. God responds to your heart. This is your connection to that which you call God and put names on. Matters not what form. It's how your heart connects to that thought. This is where the problem here, not here. And that's why so many people die from here. Because they've trusted this over this. I hope you can hear me. I'm talking softly. Margaret's having a two chuckle day. Somebody doesn't want to be blocked. I don't block anybody unless you're totally rude and obnoxious and I've been totally rude and obnoxious in my lifetime so I know how to recognize that. <laughs> forgiveness is hard. Think of the word forgiveness. Break it down. Forgiveness is not something. It is being in favor of for giving. Am I in a place in my life where I'm in favor, I'm all for giving my love, my presence, my love and my light to someone else. Am I in favor of that? If I'm not in favor of it, then I don't care what you do, you're not forgiving. It's not wiping away what somebody else has done. But it's where do you stand in the situation? Are you willing to give? And the truth is you don't still associate with people who are repeating the same pattern over and over again. Can you love them enough? to separate yourself and allow them to be in that misery and still love them. We don't have to save anybody. This is an illusion that we have to save somebody. We have to save ourselves. We are the ones we have been waiting for because we are the ones who have the power to do that now. No longer drinking the Kool-Aid. 
That's my angel who's a little wise guy. Anyway, uh, bless you all. Thank you all. Uh, nice to be with you here this morning. For those of you who hear this later and in the world, um, just remember that I do love you and, and the world loves you and that which you call God loves you. And it's all about love. It's all about love and compassion and how do we as the beings of light that we are really turn around and focus on our light is what's important and how do we shine like the sun on each other there's always something to be grateful for even when life is hard and times are tough. Aho, I love you, I thank you, I respect you, I am you, you are me. We are unity. And that's the shape of a heart that I make with my arms. The shape right here. Be the love that you are. So all, all we can do, keep loving. Until next week, I hope that the weather is good for all of you. I hope that for those of you who have no power and no heat, I send my healing to each of you, for those of you who are have people in your families that are not well physically or emotionally, I send you light and love. And I ask that each of you deepen into yourself this week and take a new look at the world around you. And simply ask yourself, if I am that light and love that he talks about, how do I live it? So, how do you live it? It's your journey. I'm here to support you. Bless you all. And with that, I am complete. We'll see you next Friday morning. And uh, sooner, if you are, are go to the good of the whole or connection field, I'm involved with those more publicly. And um, just be at peace with the light and love that you are.